In section 3.3, we're going to look at some more rules for logarithms that we can use to simplify or change the form of the logarithm expression that we have. Um, so we're adding these to the basic rules that we learned in the previous. All right, so we're going to start off with the product rule. Remember that uh, many, um, well, logarithms are an inverse of an exponential function. Uh, and so there's that relationship between them. Remember, in fact, that uh, when we take the log of something, we end up, what we end up getting is an exponent. <clears throat> so here we're taking the log of a product, right? Two things uh, being multiplied, <clears throat> m times n. And um, what this is saying is we can break these up. Uh, so if sometimes this may be presented as a as a whole number, right? So like as a as the product. So maybe it's uh, f uh, five times twenty. So this is five times twenty is a hundred. So maybe it's saying log base a of of a hundred, and we break it into a uh, a five and a twenty, right? So we we break them into something. So it, it isn't always given to us as a product, but we can we can take the factors of a product and break it up. And sometimes that might be helpful for us in solving a particular equation. <clears throat> Particularly if one of those uh, parts, one of those factors of the product matches a base. Uh, that makes it a lot easier for us to, to simplify it without a calculator. So at any rate, um, this is equal to the sum. So if you remember, um, when we talked about the product rule with exponents, it was, we had similar bases, uh, and we're multiplying oops, the bases, so a to the m times a to the n, that uh, what we ended up doing with the exponents was adding them, <clears throat> uh, m plus n. So in other words, if I had x cubed times x squared, this is equivalent to x to the 3 plus 2, or 5 power. <clears throat> so we see that here going on. We have a multiplication, and we're breaking the exponents into a sum. When we take the log of something, um, <clears throat> when we take the log of something, we're, the answer is an exponent. And so these are like the two exponents being added together. So for example, the log, the ln of of uh, five times seven, maybe maybe that was even expressed as thirty five. We just want to break it down for some reason into uh, two separate logarithms. <clears throat> we can do that. Uh, it'll be equal to the uh, the ln of five plus the ln of seven. Um, and if we have variables, sometimes it helps us to separate that variable from the actual number, uh, so we can rewrite it uh, like that. So that's the product rule with the logs. <clears throat> we also had a quotient rule for exponents. Um, if you remember, a to the m over a to the m, so same base as we have here. Um, this is equal to a uh, base a to the m minus n. So again, these representing exponents, a subtraction of those exponents. <clears throat> if we're taking the log of some quotient. And again, you could re-express, uh, like if this was log of 100, you could uh, do it as log of uh, 200 divided by 2, right? So you're re-expressing 100 as 200 over 2, uh, two and then you're taking, uh, you know, breaking it up and turning it into a subtraction. So... Uh, the M over N simply represents, it doesn't have to present, be presented to you as, um, as a fraction. You can take a whole number and break it into some sort of division. If, it, if it's easy, it somehow helps you there. <clears throat> so ln of 5 over 7 is ln of 5 minus ln of 7. And, and we see the same thing down here with the 5 and the x. Again, this allows us to kind of separate x into one particular part of uh, the expression there. And the last is the power rule. Um, 
So, and the power rule said if I have A, so some base raised to a power, and I raise it to another power, this is equal to A to the M times N. <clears throat> and um, so that's what's similar here. Um, if we have log base A of M to the R power, so we've got a power, remember log base A of M is the outcome of that is a exponent. And so we can take it and rewrite it as a product of one exponent times the other exponent, r. So r is an exponent here. This also, the log base a of m, is an exponent of the exponential expression of that. And it results in, we take the r out of that power and we can just multiply it by the other quote-unquote power, which is my log statement. <clears throat> And um, this can just help us simplify any power that I have that I'm taking the log of. I can rewrite it out front as a product of that log. Okay, so here we're presented with a couple of logarithmic statements. And we're told that we told the value, actually, of a couple logarithmic statements. <clears throat> and... Um, so we're going to look at how we can rewrite this um, using some of those things and these two values that they've given us, which is very nice of them to do that. Um, so again, we're practicing rewriting and, and you know, when you're approaching a real logarithmic problem, you really have to kind of know these instinctually. And so that's what we're doing is we're practicing rewriting and, and getting used to it. And after a while you start to go, oh yeah, I think I can do this. And, oh, why don't we try this? And, um, but it, it, you guys are in the practice stage at this point. So to rewrite this first one, it's a product of Y and Z. So log base 5, I can use the product rule, log base 5 of Y plus log base 5 of Z. <clears throat> and then we're, we're told what these are, like log base 5 of Y is 2 and log base 5 of Z is 3. So this would simplify down to 5. We have another product over here, but also we have a power, so we'll be able to use a couple rules here. Um, first of all, we'll start off with log base 5 of 125. And then it's being multiplied, so we add uh, log base 5 of y to the 7th power. Great. And with that power, we know we have the power rule there. Then I can rewrite that, uh, putting the 7 out front. So that would be 7 times log base 5 of y. And here, uh, we actually have, well, we can figure out the answer. Remember, in a log, we're taking the log of 125 with a base 5. So we think 5 to what power will give me 125? And that's 5 to the third power. So the log base 5 of 125 is 3. So 3 plus 7 log 5 of y. Now, one thing I want to avoid, I want you to avoid, because uh, a lot of people will see this and want to do it, is adding those two together. You don't want to do that, because this is a sum, right? 3 plus 7 would be a sum, but we have 7 times the log over here. So that... Uh, Multiplication takes precedence above addition. So it would be improper it would be improper for you to add that three and the seven. But also because we have that we were told that log base five of y is equal to two, I know that this would be seven times two, and that's fourteen. And then we can go fourteen times three. So seventeen is the final simplification of that statement. A couple more, uh, same statements, log base 5 of z is 3, log base 5 of y is 2. Uh, and here we have a statement with z and y, square root. So, <clears throat> first of all, let's deal with that square root. Um, remember, a square root is just a power, 1 half in this case, of z uh, divided by y. And that power can go to both the top and the bottom of this. 
So that would be log base 5 of z to the 1 half over y to the 1 half. But now I have it in a form that I can now write this as the log base 5 of this quotient. And so that would be log base 5 of the top, z to the 1 half, minus log base 5 of y to the 1 half. And both those 1 halves can come out front. 1 half log base 5 of z, and 1 half log base 5 of y using the, uh, the rule, the <laughs> power rule. Log base 5 of z is 3, so this is 1 half times 3. And log base 5 of y is 2. So that's 3 halves, basically. 3 halves minus this 2 over 1, 2 halves, which is uh, 1 half. And so all of that simplifies down to 1 half. Um, sometimes with these log functions, there are alternate ways that you could do it um, and still end up with the same answer. Um, so I do want to uh, maybe demonstrate here how um, this could be done in a, a slightly different way. If I started back here, actually, so at the be very beginning, um, this is the log base 5, z over y, and it's raised to the 1 half power. So that 1 half power... We can start off at the very beginning just using the power rule and rewriting that, making it 1 half uh, log base 5 um, of that difference. So now I'm going to write out the, the quotient there. Uh, maybe I'm, yeah, maybe I'm doing that a little too fast. So let me write this, the, let me write the statement, the resulting statement here first. 1 half log base 5 of z over y, which is we can apply the quotient rule here. One half times, so what I need to remember is that I need to put this in brackets or parentheses uh, because I'm gonna turn it into a subtraction. Log base five of z minus log base five of y. And it's important to rewrite that because um, with the parentheses, otherwise if I don't have Specifically, let's say this parenthesis here. Right, rewrite that. Um, and the other one too. But this one half will only be multiplied by half of the expression. It'll only be multiplied by what's right next to it. But we want one half to be written or multiplied by the result of log base five of, of z over y. And log base 5 of z over y is this entire expression here. So that 1 half will need to distribute to both of those. Uh, but we don't, we're not going to distribute it. We're just going to evaluate this. Uh, log base 5 of z is uh, 3. And log base 5 of y is 2. So we see 1 half times 3 minus 2 is 1, which leaves us with the same answer we got over here. As long as we do it right, there are alternative ways that we can do this. All right, now I'm going to erase this and let's do the next expression here. In my next expression, I also have a product, um, but then we also have some powers here. So I could rewrite this as, uh, let's go here, I'm going to use a different color. Uh, breaking it up as a product, log base 5, z to the 1 30th times, or I'm sorry, plus, not times, uh, log base 5 of y to the fifth. <clears throat> so now we can use the power rule uh, to rewrite these numbers out front. 1 30th times log base 5 of z plus 5 times log base 5 of y. And of course, these become, this is uh, log base uh, 5 of z is 3, so that's 1 30th times 3. You can see why this is, it's really necessary to keep yourself organized. 
5 times log base 5 of y is 2. So that's 3 thirtieths, which is 1 tenth, added to 10. So 1 tenth plus 10 is, well, 10 and a tenth, or 10.1 is another way you can write that. 1 tenth is 0.1. <clears throat> or you can write this as 10 and a tenth, like, like so, like a mixed number. Either way, uh, that's our values simplified there. Okay, without um, without knowing, like on the previous problems, we were kind of given some values that we knew. We knew that log base 5 of z somehow was equal to 3, because they told us. And log base 5 of y was somehow equal to 2, again, because they told us. Um, so... But just rewriting these uh, in different ways is usually the, the types of realistic uh, operations that we will want to sometimes do on expressions like this. <clears throat> so when I'm in evaluating, we're going to look at A first. A first. And um, so we're going to first look at this and go, oh, look, uh, we have a quotient here. We have something on top divided by the bottom. So... Let's separate that out first using the quotient rule. So that would just keep, excuse me, give me log base 2, where 4 came from, log base 2 at the top, which is x squared times x minus 1 cubed. Maybe I'll put this in brackets just so it's a little clearer. Too many parentheses going on. Looks messy. And then minus log base 2 of the denominator, 2x plus 1 to the fourth. I use brackets over here because I had parentheses within parentheses, so it's starting to look complicated. That's usually when we're just, we'll go one level up and write them as brackets. Uh, certainly don't have to do that. But <clears throat> I can now break this apart using the product rule. So we've used the quotient rule, now we're going to use the product rule because that's x squared times x minus 1 cubed. So again, log base 2 of x squared plus log base 2 um, of x minus 1 cubed. And then we still have this log base 2 of 2x plus 1 to the fourth. Cool. Well, the only last thing we could do here is we've got powers. We've got the 2, we've got the 3, and we have the 4. Those can be taken out front. And um, that makes it less complicated. I think you would agree that, you know, multiplying is kind of less complicated than raising something to the power. So uh, that gives me 2 log base 2 of x plus 3 log base 2 of x minus 1 and minus 4 log base 2s of 2x plus 1. And that's as simple, really, as we can make this. Um, now, when I say simple, that's probably the wrong word for me to use. Um, we're not simplifying these expressions so much as we are re-expressing them in a different form. That's why it says, you know, writing these in expanded form. Sometimes uh, this might be the better thing to evaluate as opposed to this expanded form. But there are other times where writing in expanded form is a more beneficial way for me to evaluate something. And so we want to go be able to go through and do uh, all of them, right? And that's, that's our goal. Uh, it's not saying one is more simple than the other. Uh, we're just rewriting them. And one of, the, one of the mistakes you don't wanna, well, you wanna avoid, and I, I actually am gonna give you a list of do not do this temptational rules. Um, is to look at something like this where you have the x minus 1 or the 2x plus 1 and, it, and to separate those out into a subtraction statement or an addition statement. We don't do that. There is nothing that says the log base a of a minus b or something minus something can be expanded out into the log base 2 of x minus the log base 2 of, of 1. Can't do that. We, the only time we re rewrite it as a subtraction is when we start off with a division. And the only time we rewrite it as an addition is when we start off with a multiplication. That's where I can rewrite it as an addition. So we cannot break up these addition statements or anything like that.
<clears throat> All right, let's take a look at the next one. First off, we have, <clears throat> I'm going to rewrite it outside of a square root, right? Square roots aren't something we really, um, you know, want there. We like to have powers. We don't really have the rules with the square roots. We just simply relate them back to powers. So log base C of x cubed y, oops, that's supposed to be a y, y squared z to the fifth. And we can say all raised to the one half power because they were all underneath the square root symbol, the radical symbol. And this one half then, I'm just gonna go ahead and rewrite it out front. And so I have one half log base C of the product of these three things, x cubed, y squared, z to the fifth. And the, the one half is now out front. But this is these are three uh, factors, x cubed, y squared, z to the fifth. And so this is a multiplication. We can break this into an addition or rewrite it into an addition statement of each individual one. So one half, again, parentheses, log base C of x cubed plus log base C of y squared plus log base C of z to the fifth. And again, we can use the product rule again with these individual ones. So this would be one half. Again, I'm keeping that one half there. Notice how every time I rewrite this, these are all equivalent statements. One is equal to whatever's above it. That's what you want to practice doing as you're organizing your work. And I know that it can be frustrating. It's like doing one step every time and then rewriting a bunch of stuff. Uh, but... Half of this is keeping yourself organized because you really want to get to the very end, right? Where you have the right answer. And this will help you get there. So this three, we're going to take out, put it out front, the squared, and then the five. So that's three log CX plus four, or I'm sorry, two uh, log CY, log base CY, plus five log base C z <clears throat> and if we wanted to we could distribute the one half that would give me three halves log base c x so one half to the, times three one half times two so one half of two is one so plus one log base c y we don't even have to put the one and then one half times that so five halves log base C of Z. And I believe this is as far as we can go there. Again, we've just rewritten this in another form. One may be easier than the other, or it may not be, but these are options that we have within the rules of logarithms and exponents. So in those previous ones, you saw that we actually sometimes made it a little bit bigger is kind of definitely an expansion of and the expansion when we talk about that generally you're talking about uh you know turning it into addition subtraction um instead of the multiplication and division and so what we're going to try here is kind of going the other way rewriting these in a more condensed way um so we're putting them in a more condensed form of where our final form is more like multiplication and division of logs. Not so many individual logs, but we've condensed them down to maybe one or two logs. Um, so, for example, let's start with something fairly easy. And by easy, uh, well, we have a subtraction here. And um, so we know a subtraction can be rewritten, going kind of backwards there, using the quotient rule backwards, uh, log... And this is a log base 10 because nothing is written. So we assume there's a base 10 here. And with log base 10, we don't have to write it. Okay. So this would be just a single log of the quotient of what we were taking the logs of. So 3x over 4y. And really, that's, that's kind of all we can do here. Um, 
we can't really go much further. <clears throat> this one could have been expanded more had we wanted to write it more expanded, right? Because this would be the log base 3 plus the log... Uh, not base 3, sorry. The log of 3 plus the log of t uh, x, and then subtracting log of 4 plus log of y. But this would be going in the backwards direction, just turning it into a product there. I'm sorry, a, of a quotient there. <clears throat> uh, for the other, let's see what we have here. Um, I can, uh, you know, this is an addition statement, so we can turn this into a multiplication. Uh, before I do that, though, I'm also noticing this times, times even by one half. If I want to condense this, let's turn that back into a power. So 2ln, we're using the natural log here, x. Actually, no, we've got 2 here as well. So we'd want to turn that back into a power. So let me erase my 2, save ourselves a step. We'll just do all powers at once. So that would be the ln of x squared plus ln of x squared plus 1 to the 1 half. So we, we use the power rule backwards there. And I got a big line. And then, um, well, this is a state addition of two LNs, right? Same, so they're both natural logs of these two things. And so that we know is a multiplication. So this would be the LN, we can turn it into one multiplication of x squared times uh, x squared plus one to the one half. <clears throat> And we can leave it like that, or uh, possibly we could also write it as not to the one-half power, but x squared times the square root of x squared plus 1. Again, uh, it just depends on what type of like outcomes <coughs> you want there, what form you want them in, uh, to know, oh, this is easier if we write it as a square root, or this is easier if we leave it as uh, to the one-half power, but... These two are different bases, so there's really no, no way for us to combine these together into one statement. So we just leave them as a statement of a product. Okay, another one here. Um, we've got some powers uh, that we can do. I've got a, a two here. Um, but these aren't being multiplied here, so I'm just going to first take care of that. Log base five or sorry, that's log base 2, of 5 squared, uh, plus log base 2 of 9, which 9 could be 3 squared. I don't know if that's going to be helpful to us. I don't think it would be. 75 can't be written as a power. Um, so we'll just leave that as log base 2 of 75. <clears throat> Um, this might have been, uh, the reason why I saw the 9 there, thinking 3 squared, so log base 2 of 3 squared, well, is that any simpler? Not, not really. Um, however, if I had been able to write it, let's say it was, it was 4 instead of 9, then I could have written 2 squared. So you'd have a log base 2 of 2 squared, which would just become 2, right? Uh, because these two would match. Uh, but 3 and 2 don't match, so it really doesn't help us to simplify that. And sometimes you'll catch things that you're like, oh, look, I, you know, if I would have caught this, um, um, yeah, like 75, maybe you could rewrite that as in a different problem, because I don't think it really helps here, but maybe it helps to write it as a product, 25 uh, times 3. And 25 is 5 squared, so if I had a base 5 here, maybe that would be helpful because then the bases would match and we just get rid of it and have a number. Um, but nothing here really, I don't see any ways around that. And again, these are just options that you have. Uh, eventually, you'll probably end up at the same place um, if there were options. So you don't always have to freak out and think, well, if I don't get this, it's not going to work. Um, all right, let's try the first two here. That's an addition. So we'll write it as one log, log base 2 of 5 squared times 9. And we have this log base 2 of 75 still. And 
well, this, this, you know, we can make that into one number. That's 25 times 9. And 25 times 9 is 225, I believe. And so we'll go ahead and just write that. Log base 2 of uh, 225 minus log base 2 of 75. You can also just leave it as a product, 25 times 9, or you know, whatever suits your fancy. <laughs> uh, and then we have a subtraction, so we can rewrite this as a quotient. Log base 2 of 225 over 75. Um, does 75 go into 225? And in fact, it does. goes evenly three times. So we've simplified this all down. <laughs> to log base 2 of 3. Isn't that nice? Uh, much easier to evaluate than, you know, you'd say this is a much more condensed version. In fact, I don't, you'd have a hard time going backwards here. You have to go, well, let's rewrite 3 as 225 over 75, and then, well, and then we'll write that as a subtraction, and then let's break up 225 into 25 times 9, and anyway... <laughs> Once you know, once you've done the number calculations on those, there's kind of no going back. All right, and then one more that we're going to try to tackle here. Um, <clears throat> all right, so I'm going to go ahead and distribute this this one third. One thing that uh, you might be tempted to do is go because at first I thought, well, can I just write this as one big power, like to the one third? Uh, no. <laughs> We can't do that because multiplying by one-third is not the same as raising something to the one-third. It's only those ln equations where we have log base a of m to an n. And this is just one-third times this whole expression. Um, this is where we can rewrite it and go, okay, let's have n uh, log base a of m. That's doing the rule correctly. Shoot, I'm trying to get rid of this big thing here. And log base A of N. <clears throat> and this is a sum of a bunch of, of uh, things. And so, yeah, we cannot move the one-third up there. That's That may be a temptation for you. But what we can do is distribute it, right? And make this one-third ln of x plus ln, or one-third, you know, we're distributing it here to each of the pluses and minuses there, so three times. I'm going to rewrite that. One-third ln of x plus one minus one-third ln x squared plus one. All right, and then we can turn these into powers. So then it's ln x to the one-third. So there's a subtle difference there. Um, yeah, x plus 1 to the one-third minus ln x squared plus 1 uh, to the one-third. <clears throat> And now let's look at, uh, well, we've got an addition statement here, so let's turn that into a multiplication. Ln of, uh, let's see, x to the one-third, and I'm going to put this in brackets, times x plus one to the one-third. Since they're both the same power, I can actually... Yeah, let's see. I can actually write that as ln x times x plus 1 to the 1 third. Is that right? And then we go ahead and write the second part here. Uh, ln x squared plus 1 to the 1 third. And this... This is an ln of a subtraction, uh, two lns, same logs, uh, and so let's write them as a quotient. So that would give me ln 
of the top, which the top was x times x plus 1 to the 1 third. I guess I don't need to put this sort of bracket here because we're going to see it as, as our fraction. But I needed the bracket here to show that this 1 third applies to both, both things there. And then on the bottom, we would have um, the other part. So x squared plus 1 to the 1 third. Everything's being raised to the 1 third. So that would be x times x plus 1. We could just rewrite it all as being to the 1 third x squared plus 1 to the 1 third like so. And um, that makes me think maybe I could have rewritten, but we didn't know that at the very beginning. So I'm not really sure if, I, if raising it all to the one third is correct, but you might actually be able to do that. <clears throat> you just want to be careful. I don't like to, like for here, uh, start off with something big like that. Keep it safe. We took them to each. If there were some other products here, I think we would run into problems if there were other numbers in there, but there weren't. At any rate, um, there you have this expression. So let's look at some things we don't want to do. So here, here is my new, uh, less exhaustive list of the do not do these rules of logarithms. I had some do not do, not do these rules for exponents. One of the big ones is if we have a sum or a difference that we're raising to a power, one of the things I say is this is a do not do this rule because you'll want to do it at some point is distribute that power to the individual parts of the sum or the difference. Uh, emphasize, do not do this. Uh, it's bad. Because, like, for example, x plus 3 raised to the second power is not equal to x squared plus 3 squared. It just doesn't work. Where we can distribute a power like that is x times 3, or, you know, squared. This would be x squared 3 squared or a quotient, so a over b to a power, that would be a to that power over b to that power. But it doesn't work with sums or differences. Uh, but still, you want to do it. You just do. It's a temptation. So you just have to resist temptation. So here's a few other ones where you're like, oh, this is kind of like a rule, so it's really easy to, to make the mistake. And... Um, <sighs> Here, when we have the log of a sum, uh, m plus n, we cannot break that up and just, like, distribute the m. It doesn't work. What would work here, you know, for this half, um, is that this could be rewritten in as m times n, right? The m times n, the product, can be rewritten as a sum of the two factors, <clears throat> m and n. But we can't take a sum and break it into a sum. And in a similar way, you can see here, I have the log base a of m to the n. We don't want to break that into a product of two logs, right? So we don't want to break it into log base a of m times log base a of n. You know that it would be actually be this. It would be the, that product would turn into the, the uh, sum of the two logs. And here, uh, log base A of M over N, don't turn that into a quotient. We know that that actually would turn into this, uh, a subtraction statement. So the subtraction statement, we also uh, don't want to turn it into the division of two separate logs. This isn't the log of M divided by the log of N. This is actually the log A of m over n. Um, and so there's a very subtle difference there, but there's a difference. So the log of, you know, a, diff uh, a fraction like this, we don't take the log of the top and the log of the bottom and then turn it into a subtraction. Like, we could go all over the place. Uh, you know, the, the log base A of a fraction, we can turn into a subtraction statement like we have here. Uh, but you can see I'm crisscrossing across these here. And um, 
if we were raising a log statement to the R power, that's a lot different than um, moving the log out front here. You have to look at, this is a tricky one to see the difference here. You have to look at what the R is being applied to. Here, the R is being applied to the parentheses and inside the parentheses, the entire log statement. And so I want to take the result of this and I want to raise it to that power. That uh, Raising something to a power is not the same as multiplying by it. Uh, where this can be rewritten is the log base A of M to the R power. Now here, the uh, power R is for the M, right? It's M to the R power. It's not the log base A of M. So <clears throat> this is where we can rewrite it with the R out front, right? The R applies to the M, and we're changing that by applying R to uh, the whole thing. That's the surprising result here. Because remember, these the log base A of M is an exponent. It's When we take the log of something, we're getting the exponent part of the exponential, and then r is also an exponent. So we're multiplying two exponents, r and the log base a of a statement. But this that's not the same here because this r applies to the whole thing. And that's, that's where I believe here it would be the problem, is that this uh, power of one-third, I don't want to apply it to this whole statement here. Um, because raising something to the one-third is not the same as multiplying it times one-third. Um, so at this point, I wouldn't do that, because in, in some problems, you might run into to issues there. At any rate, those are the do not do these rules, and those are, I know, kind of a negative thing. It's like don't do these negative things, uh, but you do want to watch out for that as you begin to simplify and practice rewriting uh, logarithmic expressions.